Today I'd like to talk about how to determine economic order quantity assuming you have a 10 year time horizon. Let's frame this problem. Assume we have 10 years with uncertain demand in each year. But we can only we have to establish an order quantity that, that does not change over time. We can order at most once per year, but we don't have to order every year. And the cost per order is $1,000. We're buying and selling product that has a net margin of $2 per unit. And let's initially assume there's no salvage value of the product that's not sold at the end of the 10 years. Uh, we'll assume it's discount rate of 10% in discounting back our cash flow. We're also got, not going to assume any taxes here. And the sales loss due to lack of product cannot be recovered. In other words, we can't say, well, we'll promise, to, promise it to you the following year. So what is our focus on decision? We need to determine what is the optimum order quantity that applies when we order. Remember, this is going to be constant over a 10-year time frame. The items marked with an asterisk here are items that we're going to hold constant through the 10 years. However, in the modeling we're going to be doing, it would be easy to change these to be probabilistic. So the distribution demand in each year is obviously critical. So the demand distribution is not symmetrical. It's asymmetric. Uh, it's got a minimum of 800 and a maximum of 1100. The EV is 970 units. You can see the distribution, the histogram distribution on the right side there. So what does a deterministic simulation look like? Let's make sure we understand what we're talking about. Let's assume that we're going to start with this, uh, we're going to order 931. Remember now back here we said that the EV unit is EV number of units is 970, so we're actually ordering fewer than the expected value. Uh, the gray line represents how many units we order each year. The blue line represents the demand in this particular simulation. And we're going to run a thousand of these simulations, so there's a lot of these different blue lines. And then the gold line represents how many units are on hand at the end of the year, end of year. So in this particular simulation, it looks like we ended up with about 100 units left over. Now, if I were to increase my order quantity to about 1,500, it's going to skip some years. So we can see the ordering here. We ordered in the first year, the second year, but didn't order in the third, or in the fourth or fifth, but not the sixth. We're going to see the same demand function. This is the same demand function as over here. And you can see the resulting um, inventory goes up and down, up and down, and at the end of this 10-year period we have 900. So let's flip over the model and see what it looks like. Okay, here's our model. We have the, uh, the unit cost and the unit sale price, that gives us the margin of 2. We have the number of items ordered here of 931. Uh, the cost border of 1,000. There's not going to be any salvage value. Uh, we have a discount rate of 10. And the demand per year here is shown as a, a minimum of 800, a maximum of 1,100, and most likely of 1,000. We're then going to take this distribution, which applies to every year, and come up with a different answer every year for the demand. So in year one, in this particular simulation, it's 1026. In year two, it's 892, and so forth and so on. I can look at different simulations. This little uh, tool here will change the simulations. You can see how those are changing over time. So given those demands, we come down here and we say, how much do we order? We're going to order 931 every year because uh, the demand, the inventory at the end of the year here is only 35, so I obviously I want to order some more. 111 here, I need to order some more, so, so forth and so on. Uh, by year 5 in this particular simulation, 
I've sold all my product. I don't have any product at the end of the year. I can then calculate my cash flow by talking about the revenue. Uh, and the revenue is how many units did I sell? Sold here. Here's my sold line. This is really important. You see, it's the minimum of my demand and how many units I have on hand. So I had 35 left over from year one, plus I ordered another 931. So in this particular case, I could only sell 966. So there was some lost sales here. We do that for every year. We can then calculate the cash flow down here and the MPV in here. Now, in this particular model, we've done some strange things for, on the discounting. We're going to use mid-year discounting for the revenue. That's because the product's being sold throughout the year. On the other hand, the cost of goods sold is, we assume, paid for at the beginning of the year. So this is a beginning of the year calculation. And on the order cost, we're going to pay that at also at the beginning of the year. And the salvage value is at the end of the year, so at the end of year 10. So we now can add up those NPVs. They're all at 10%. They're just calculated from a different point in time uh, in the time series. So in this particular case, we end up with a 1024. We now have our net present value. Uh, this is a little histogram of that. Uh, we can also calculate the lost sales in a similar way. And we can look at the inventory at the end of the 10 years and the number of orders. In this case, it ordered every year. Uh, we can then calculate the expected value and the percentiles for various metrics. We captured here the MPV, lost sales, end of term, number of orders, and so forth and so on. So now, numbers are fine, but I find it much easier to look at graphics. So in this particular case, I set the uh, order quantity 931 to be the reference case. It turns out that that's actually optimized. In other words, if I try to maximize my MPV, my expected value MPV, that's the best I can do with this situation. And we end up with a curve that looks like this for MPV. This red bar represents the current simulation. Here is the lost sales. Uh, down here is the inventory. So you can see that about 60% of the time uh, we do not end up with any inventory and the other 60%. There are a few cases where I end up with a lot of inventory left over, even ordering 931. And here are the units demanded and purchased over the 10 years. So we're, the de total demand is given by this blue curve and the orange line is what we actually ordered and sold. So let's come up here and try some things. So let's split the screen. And we'll come up here and we're going to find our order quantity. Here's 931. So what would happen, we said that the expected value for the number of units demanded was 970. So let's put in a 970 here for the units demanded. What happens? The blue line represents 970 units that we purchase every year. The black line represents our reference case at 931. So by ordering more, we have some upside here on the MPV because we don't have as many lost sales. See, the lost sales has moved to the left. On the other hand, we've got a lot more downside because we've ordered product earlier, some of which we don't necessarily need. And we can see that down here in the inventory, that the inventory left is much, much higher 
than what we had with the 931 or our reference case. And this blue line, the demand has not changed, but what we have purchased and sold is much further to the left. That's reflecting the uh, fewer lost sales. But once again, what is our objective? To minimize the lost sales or to maximize our MPV? We can see here that the MPV, our reference case was 2050, our new MPV is 1539. So we lost about a fourth of our MPV. Now I can run this at different order quantities and, and then plot that. And so here is the graph that I've done. And we can see that the MPV goes up, up, up. At 931, it reaches a peak and then it rapidly drops off. So our 970 should be right about here. Let's go back over to our PowerPoint. So here's the same graphic we saw before with our reference case. So one of the things we might be interested in is how does the optimum order quantity compare to the demand distribution? We're, we've said the optimum order quantity is 931 and this that represents about the what the 27th percentile on the total distribution for demand in any given year. And it's below the average of 970, it's below the P50 of 980, and it's below the most likely of 1000. And that's because we have an upper limit on what we can sell. We can't sell more than we have in stock, and we can't sell more than this demanded. Here's that same chart we looked at on the model. So here's the sensitivity on the discount rate. We've been running this at 10%. A lot of people may use the weighted average cost of capital and then there could be a lot of disagreement on what that weighted average cost of capital is. But what we find out from the sensitivity to probability here, or sensitivity to the discount rate, is that it doesn't matter whether it's 10% or 8% or 5%. Not until we get down to about 2.5% do we need to be concerned about what discount rate to use. As the discount rate goes up to 1.5%, then we start to make much more significant order quantities. To look at the sensitivity of our model, we can also look at this tornado diagram. Now a lot of tornado diagrams are done deterministically. This is a probabilistic or an EV tornado diagram. So this really represents the expected value MPV given that I hold one variable constant and all the others remain uncertain. So the demand is always going to be uncertain in, the, in our case. So here's our reference case of nine, uh, 2050 at a 913 base. And if I reduce the order quantity to 900, you can see my MPV goes down. If I increase it to 950, it also goes down. In fact, it goes down more at 950 than at 900. Similarly for salvage value, let's assume that 10 years hence I could sell any leftover inventory at 50% of the acquisition cost or 100%. You can see that would increase my MPV a little bit. But the big hitters are the margin. We've assumed $2 margin on our units. If we could just increase that by 10% to 2.1, $2.10, look how much MPV we gain, or if we could change the order cost from 1,000 to 900, look at the MPV we could gain. So what this tells me is since we're not very sensitive to this order quantity, what we might want to do is to negotiate a lower cost, order cost, for a higher order quantity. So that's what I wanted to show you today. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.